Kangaroo translates to drum in Japanese, but outside of Japan, it refers to Japanese drum called wadaiko in the art form itself. Taiko is deeply rooted in Japanese history and cultural pride. It has traditional uses in religion practices, seasonal festivals, and theater. Ensemble Taiko Drumming, called Kumi Daiko, invented by jazz musician Daihachi Oguchi, emerged more recently in the 1950s. It is now a very popular form of drumming in Japan, America, and all over the world. Grandmaster Seiichi Tanaka, known as the father of North American Taiko, studied directly under Daihachi Oguchi and formed the San Francisco Taiko Dojo. Around the same time, Kinara Taiko was formed by Reverend Maz Kodani at Senshin Buddhist Temple. Both groups played a large role in exposing and shaping Kumi Daiko in the U.S. Taiko in America began to popularize in Asian communities along the West Coast during the Asian American movement which began in the 1960s. Taiko groups from Buddhist churches and Asian American communities worked to bring people together and to use Taiko as an outlet for activism. Direct descendants of these Taiko groups formed teams on their college campuses in the 90s, starting with Kyoto at UCLA. It is now common to see Taiko groups across the states, and some even participate in intercollegiate events. Taiko is both traditional and fluid. While it continues to expand to serve new purposes, it carries on its legacy of creating an artistic platform to empower, express, and share the stories of the performers. Art in all places reflects the politics and concerns that are local to that place. Protesters march in the streets and make noise to have their message heard. Similarly, Taiko unites people by literally making noise and having their music heard. There are lots of groups that I know of that were originally formed to advocate things like women's rights and the LGBTQ identity or simply to provide safe spaces for people. I've also seen Taiko used to communicate feelings of perseverance, joy, rage, triumph, and more. sounds that we send booming through the streets tell people that we are here, we are loud, and we are not shutting up until our brothers and sisters have the rights and respect that they deserve. I think in these dire times, it's super important for us to stay connected with each other. We switched to using Zoom for practice, although the connection has been pretty spotty. COVID-19 has definitely challenged the way Jishin teaches and interacts with their members, but Jishin still continues to meet two to three times a week on Zoom to achieve our goals. Lots of the songs that are composed in the collegiate community are fusions of cultures, a melding between what we believe to be traditional taiko and our own musical tastes. I love what taiko does for me. I love how seeing it can invigorate and inspire audiences, how playing it can help someone feel confident, feel strong, feel at home. I love the way that the loud, deep sounds resonate within us and draw us together. The bonds I made while playing taiko are invaluable to me. There is something really special when you hit the drum and feel the sound reverberate into your chest.
taiko because it lights my spirit on fire. I play taiko for the people. I've met so many wonderful people in Senryu, each of which play a part in creating a fantastic memories. Taiko to me is more than an art. It invokes in me a raw and powerful emotion whenever I hit the drum. It almost shuts down everything, just so my whole mind and my entire soul can concentrate when I do. The next piece comes from Osaka, called Danjiri Barashi. It is music that accompanies the Danjiri Festival, which they take these huge, huge carts, decorated carts, and they actually run them at precarious speeds through the streets, often running into buildings and light poles. It's one of the most dangerous festivals in Japan, if you're happy, to, happy enough to be able to see it or lucky enough to be able to see it. But that's not the exciting part for us. The exciting part for us is the part where they drum, of course. And in this particular festival, the gentleman who taught us this style told us that this actually was created during a time when Osaka was facing a lot of both natural disasters and a cholera epidemic. And what they would do is they would take these carts to the street and they would ask people to throw all of their bad things into them so that it could take them to the outside of the village and discard them. So this was infectious materials as well as uh, their bad luck for the season, their bad health, and so forth. And so that as Sasha is playing this particular piece, we're going to ask that you give all that bad junk up so that she can take it and drum it away. That's the traditional sort of aspect of taiko that we enjoy bringing to the stage. Many of us actually travel to Japan to study with traditional festival groups doing this in communities throughout Japan. Some festivals we actually go house to house and drag stuff out, not literally, but spiritually so that we can start their houses off clean for the year. And so, throughout the year, whatever has bogged you down or gotten in your way, please feel free to throw it to the stage so that we can clear it away for you. Danji Bayashi was taught to us by Katogi Akira of the group Wariki. This is his arrangement of traditional festival music and adapted to the stage. We very much hope you enjoy it.
Hey, how's it going? My name is Isaku and I'm a taiko artist based in Los Angeles. Uh, today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the Obon Festival and its relationship with the taiko that we see on stage today. I'd also like to thank uh, Bakulatsu Taikodan for having me um, and it's an honor to be here and share this music with you. The roots of the Obon Festival can be traced back 500 years to a ritual where people would gather during the mid-August Obon season to hold a memorial service for the family of a person who passed away earlier in the year. It's said that the spirits of the deceased return home during this time. The people would gather at the house of the deceased and dance in a circle. And the family of the deceased would thank the participants by providing food. The Obon festivals we see today uh, usually take place in a community center. Uh, this could be a local park or a local plaza, a temple, a shrine, or a school. They're usually organized by the local community, and you could say it's similar in some ways to like a block party, uh, where it's a get-together for the people of the neighborhood. In both Japan and the U.S., the Obon Festival is a way to strengthen uh, community ties or bonds. Um, in order to make an Obon festival happen, uh, people need to cooperate, uh, they need to work together, communicate, and at some point they'll be dancing together, eating food together, and probably drinking together. Um, so it's a way to make the community stronger. In the U.S., there's also an element of expressing one's Japanese-American or Asian-American identity. Uh, living as a minority in the United States, uh, it's really important for people to be able to celebrate their ethnicity. The style of drumming that is played at the Obon Festival is called Bondaiko. A group called Skeroku Daiko, formed in the 1960s in Tokyo, uh, combined elements of Bondaiko, Obon Festival drumming, uh, with Hogaku Bayashi, music of the No and Kabuki Theater, and Edo Bayashi. Uh, festival music of Tokyo. Skeroku Daiko is credited with developing and popularizing the Naname style, uh, which is where you have the drum at an angle. Uh, they also composed pieces like Yodan, where you have one drum on Naname and another on a Yoko Uchi stand. Um, these are some of the more tangible contributions, but I think their biggest contribution was, or one of their biggest contributions, was creating a taiko ensemble based on indigenous music of Tokyo. In the process, they created a very distinct style of taiko drumming and elevated the technical level as well as the depth of the art form. Uh, my first taiko teacher, Mr. Kenny Endo, was a member of Skeroku Daiko, and I grew up learning taiko from Mr. Yoichi Watanabe of Amano Jaku. Uh, prior to forming Amanojaku, uh, Mr. Watanabe uh, was also a member of Skeroku Daiko. Um, another person that's associated with Skeroku Daiko is Mr. Seiichi Tanaka of San Francisco Taiko Dojo. Uh, Tanaka Sensei is considered the grandfather of Taiko in the United States, and practically every group in the U.S. is connected to uh, Tanaka Sensei in one way or another. Aside from using the anonymous stand, uh, poses like this are also very uh, characteristic of the Skeroku Daiko aesthetic, which was influenced by Bon Daiko. We'd like to play an Obon song for you. You would hear this type of music at the Obon Festival, which honors the spirits of our ancestors. You usually have the musicians on a yagura, which is a platform anywhere between 12 to 18 feet off the ground, and the dancers dance in a circle around the yagura. The song we'll be playing is called Hokkai Bon Uta, which means Obon Song from Hokkaido. It's a celebration song with some very poetic lyrics. One of the verses goes, Kita wa jūshichi tsubomi no koro ni, ima wa nijuichi hanazakari. When the person arrived at age 17, they were just a bud, but now at 21, the flowers are in full bloom. You'll also hear the background vocals sing, En ya ko ra ya, ha do koi jan jan ko ra ya. 
This isn't something you would hear in a typical Japanese conversation,、uh, and it's thought to come from a coal miner's work chant,、uh, kind of something you would say when you're carrying heavy objects. I suppose a translation would be something along the lines of, of "Here we go now."、Uh, you'll also hear "Ha doshita doshita," which means roughly "What's going on," and "Sore kara doshita," which means "What else is going on?" or "Tell me more,"、uh, or in a more nuanced way, "Keep the music coming." That's a little bit about Hokkai Bonuta. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoy. Another piece that's influenced by Bondaiko is Jack Bazaar、uh, by my friend and colleague Mr. Chris Bergstrom.、Uh, an earlier version of this piece was a duet between Chris and Masato Baba that started off with the Bondaiko patterns,、uh, but would evolve into some pretty advanced and crazy choreography.、Uh, in the ensemble version、uh, that I'll be showing you,、uh, played by Unit One. Um, I can still hear some of the allusions to Bondaiko,、uh, but at this point I would call it a separate work, like an, a work of its own,、uh, as opposed to a derivative work.、Uh, in, in any case, it's a really cool piece, and I hope you enjoy it.